Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you guys all here. This is a yucky, mm, well, no such thing as yucky. Let me use my choice of words appropriately. I'm using a new deck that I bought while I was at the States. This one's called, I have the box. I already shuffled it, cleansed it, because it's the first time I've used it on this channel. I thought it was really cool. It's called, I'm just debuting it, so I'm showing you guys. The Wandering Star by Cat Pierce. It's an 80 deck card. Tarot decks usually have 78. This one has 80 because it has a yes and a no card in there. Yeah, I thought it was really nice. But what kind of combination is this? What I mean to say is there's no such thing as yucky. I don't want to say that because there is no such thing as positive or negative. Okay, it just is. There's dark and light energy within all of us, within the universe. We have shadow side, we have light side. And I see everything as it's part of the human experience. So sometimes we go through heavier energies and it's not there to punish us. It's there so that we can have something of substance that we can use to transmute it, to change it into something positive. Otherwise, if everything was all positive all the time, we have nothing to work with. We have nothing to learn, right? We have no lessons we don't have the tools necessary to grow okay i always say usually those that go through the most in life have the biggest purposes here on this earth okay but the fact that i split it and it came out like that it just stood out to me the devil and the moon now i do want to say before we start i'm not going to make this one very long this is more like a, i'm back welcome back i know i said that before um, it's been tough. You guys know that I moved to the Dominican Republic. I did. Um, I can't believe how long it's been already. Right? Like, it's been a year and a half already. It's crazy. But, you know, I'm from New Jersey. So during the holidays, I go over there. I didn't get to go last year because of COVID. So I didn't see my family last year. I didn't spend Christmas. I spent, I'm a single mother. I spent Christmas with just me and my daughter and my dogs. That's it. Because my family had COVID last year, so we couldn't go visit. So it was really special being there. But every time I would try to, um, I got caught up. I got caught up in the posting, in the uploading as often. Because I have nieces, I have nephews. I was, you know, picking them up after school and taking them out for food, for ice cream, to like bounce house, trampoline parks, and, you know, events, took them to the Polar Express, like, you know, all these things. Because, you know, their experiences that I'm not going to, I'm not going to see them for a very long time, you know. They can't particularly just stop working or stop school to come visit me here, even though this is a great place to visit, you know, because it's sunny and whatever, but... They can't. So it was hard to post. And now that I'm here, I've only been here for a couple of days. I'm unpacking. I have stuff all over the place. So I'm settling in. But thank you for your patience. So we will get back into our routine. Okay? So I'm just going to do this to start, get the energy flowing again. Okay? The devil and the moon. Now, this deck in particular, I love it. The images really stood out to me. You know, every card stands out to me differently. And it also has writing around it. The devil here says desire, obsession, fear, shadow. And the moon here says dreams, intuition, shadow. That's a common theme. Dreams, intuition, shadow, dreams, intuition, shadow. I see it says it all over, over, over again. So you know what, what I'm getting out of that? There is somebody here. Okay? You have a desire for something. You have a desire for something, okay? Whatever it is, remember every reading is an intuitive exercise. So take it as it resonates. You are mistaking, and it's part of the human experience, no shame. Your intuition, your shadow for your intuition. You're having trouble with that. Sometimes, okay? We think we're picking up on what our intuition is telling us is the right thing to do. The right way to handle a situation. Right? But it's actually devil energy. It's actually the devil infiltrating our space, our mind. And making us think that we're tapping into angels and spirit and our intuition. 
And it's actually coming from our fear, from our shadow, putting things in our head in the name of God, in the name of our intuition. And remember, take every reading as an intuitive exercise. I can be speaking about you. This could be in relation to somebody else that you're dealing with, okay? I'm going to see how this goes. Like I said, I'm going to get the, make this one to the point, okay? But that's what I'm getting. And I want you to know that about the devil. That's where the devil gets us, and it's in the Bible. Even if you don't have to be Christian, it doesn't matter. I'm just telling you how the devil works, okay? If you don't want me to mention religion, that's fine, okay? The only place the devil exists is while we are human on this planet. Because once we're in spiritual form, unless we really go to the dark side, like you become, God forbid, Ted Bundy or something like that, you can be redeemed. And even people like that, I know it's very hard to, to, to I don't know why of all examples I'm giving, but as long, you can accept, you know, you can be redeemed at any time depending but it's really hard once you go down that dark side that path if it's too dark you know but usually when we pass away and we're spirit we're in that god energy we're with the universe we're free we don't have our shadow we're, we're our true selves we're in pure form and the only place the devil can get us is in our mind and our mind only exists when we're alive separate our mind and our thoughts from our consciousness very different things consciousness is the universe what the universe is made out of what we are what leads our thoughts even though what leads our intuition what we're tapping into but we don't really know where it comes from our thoughts is just you know our programming our process our our carnal mind our human our animal mind and that's where the devil gets us right that swords energy you know, we have in the suits and tarot, wands, swords, pentacles, cups. Swords energy is our mind. That's where the devil can get you. That's why that's the toughest suit. We have the three of swords there, which is heartbreak. Five of swords there, which is deceptions. We want one-upping someone, wanting to, you know, conflict of the sort. Defensiveness. Seven of swords is deception. Eight of swords, self-imposed imprisonment of our mind. Nine of swords is anxiety, overthinking, all of the swords energy. It's our, it's, that's where the devil gets us. That's where the devil dwells, right? And then what we do is we try to tap into our intuition to clear that energy, to try to separate our mind from our consciousness, from our spirit, from our intuition, to offset some of the damage that the devil does. And if you're new here, I'm not just talking your head off and going off on a tangent. I want to let you know I'm a medium. Every reading on this channel is timeless. Feel free to scroll through all of them. And everything that I share is divinely guided. So if, if I'm sharing this, it'll start to flow. But every reading is different and everything that comes out of my mouth is, is a divine message. Right? So that, so your mind is infected or somebody else's. The fact that I have this giant stick of white sage and rosemary to purify and protect and if you're not new to this channel you know i don't really like the smell of sage i don't so i always buy palo santo which also clears energy because i don't like the the smell of sage personally i just feel like for those of you that don't have a trained nose on what the other stuff that people smoke smells like. Obviously, you can tell there's a difference, but I don't really, you know, older people or people that don't, like, can't really tell, and I don't like my house smelling like that, and they think that I'm a smoker, you know? I don't know. It's just not a good look, you know? <laughs> like, I just don't like that. And it lingers, you know, it's, it's a really heavy smell. It's a leaf. It's not a, it's not wood. It's more like, you know, it's a different, it's, which is very specific scent. It's, it's, they're leaves. It's a plant like any other. So it has that stench, <laughs> but it, it clears out and it purifies. But I felt the need to buy this giant one while out in the United States because they don't sell that here in the Dominican Republic. And I lit it. And this one is white sage and rosemary. So this might be an omen for you to buy that in particular, okay? Because both of these properties together, it, it not just purifies and cleanses the energy in, in terms of smudging and lighting it, but it protects. And if we are starting with the devil, then you need some kind of protection. Someone needs some kind of protection here, okay? 
Now I'm getting some other, and I don't like these kind of readings, but who am I to judge what's to come out, okay? This doesn't have to just be your energy. This could be somebody else's energy that's affecting you, okay? This could be somebody trying to send you bad juju, and it's, it's a dark force. Somebody has a dark force attached to them right now. Do me a favor, get a white candle, get some sage or some Palo Santo if you want to. But if I just felt guided to recommend sage and rosemary in particular, if you don't have it with rosemary, just get sage alone. Cleanse your space. Do the garlic ritual that I um, recommended a while ago. Maybe I'll post a separate video on that in particular. Some people said that they don't remember it, okay? Maybe I'll, I'll post like a three minute video on it. Okay, there's a need to break some dark forces. Because I'm getting that this is not just attached to you. This is attached to somebody else. Somebody's thoughts are absolutely clouded. And the problem is it's really doing a good job making you think that you're thinking clearly. That you're tapping to your intuition. That you're following your dreams. There's a dark force, like, literally obsessed with you. It's a shadow. And this might be in relation to somebody else, too, or vice versa. This is where it becomes an intuitive exercise, and you have to determine how this resonates. Meaning, there could be somebody that could have convinced themselves that you're too good to be true, or you guys are not meant to be together, or something like that. But really... It doesn't really come so much from your connection, but more so their fears, their shadow overpowers their mind so much that, that they see the world through that lens. So they want you to know that it's not so much that they have an issue with you, but they're going to have that issue with everybody. Okay? That's how I see it. Now, what's interesting is that the devil in this deck, again, it's like trickery, right? Because there's a rose here and this, it's in a vase or vase, however you call it, has an evil eye. An evil eye is there for protection, right? So you feel like you're protected, but the devil is still getting in your mind this is going to make sense don't worry but the way i'm channeling this card you see it's a woman in red it's a very seductive energy and she has green eyes i'm not saying if you have green eyes you're a bad person my daughter has green eyes <laughs> you know i call her my little cat <laughs> my daughter has green eyes so it's not that but i'm saying but i'm channeling the color green as like green with envy this definitely somebody, there's something in the mix here, somebody that has some kind of envious energy with you and it's affecting you. And it might not even be malicious. You know, sometimes you can love somebody and it's the people that you love the most that actually envy you one way or another. Maybe they envy that you're free. Maybe you work at home and they don't or something like that. I'll give you my personal example. I'm not saying that everybody that I know has that kind of energy, but sometimes <laughs> I have like a protection prayer that I say in my mind every time somebody makes like a, a compliment. For example, I work at home. I have a YouTube channel. You can always tell the energy when someone's genuinely being like, oh, that's so cool. And someone's like, oh, that's so awesome. I wish I could work at home. But like they say it in a way like they're jealous of your circumstance. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've felt that energy from people before because they see that I moved overseas and that I could work at home, you know? And, but the way they say it, and I say it like a protection prayer in my mind because they, they I'm not these people, and none of them have caused, wanted to cause me harm, but it's like in them. And these are people that simultaneously, unfortunately, like really miserable where they're at, you know? And I always say, and, and so, so that happens. It's not like that they, they're envious and they want to cause you harm, but sometimes people can't help it. Because of their own circumstances, you know? 
not being able to see that nobody gets a blessing for no reason, right? Like I went through enough dark to be able to have this opportunity from God in the first place. I struggled a lot for a long time and I still do. Let's see what this is about. I need more information. There's something like that. Three of the fact that the three of swords just flipped here. I'm just gonna pull them all out, and I and I was taught and I gave that example to me is not a coincidence. I like this deck. Heartbreak, nine of wands, knight of swords. It's a lot of swords energy here. You see. You know, what's interesting is like, you know, this deck, every deck has different energy. The cards have different meaning, different energy. So I'm going to take it into account that this one has like um, messages around it. Because the Knight of Swords is just somebody that gets, it's the fastest moving knight. It's the horse that moves the quick. It could be impulsive communication. Someone said some cutting words, you know, somebody that moves in very fast without thinking much, right? Their shadow overpowers. But this card in particular says highs, lows, conflict, tension. Okay? So I'm going to take that into account. This is absolutely in regards, if you've been having highs and lows in your own life, it's because of something that needs to be cleared. But this could also be in terms of a relationship, someone that you're having highs and lows with. Now, some, there's definitely heartbreak here. Somebody is sad. This is not the best energy. The moon card is also something very deep. So also at nighttime, you might feel very deep sadness, very deep sadness and obsessive thoughts, okay, about somebody that you wanted to be with, that you have a desire to be with that didn't work out for whatever reason. She has a snake, that devil has a snake. The devil could be a sign of regeneration, but it's around the devil. So you might feel like somebody was not who you thought that they were, okay? And you're feeling right now, you're feeling feelings very deep. And some days you're good, some days you're not. And you feel like you have to put up your boundaries with this person. The Nine of Wands is putting up your boundaries. You feel like you have to protect yourself. If you look at her eyes here, she doesn't look like she's just protecting herself because she wants to be strong. She looks like she's protecting her heart because of sadness. And it came out right after the Three of Swords, which says heartbreak, sorrow, and grief. Somebody's heartbroken here about something. Okay? We're going to get into details. Don't worry. Somebody is heartbroken about something. Because the devil got in the way of a connection or a situation somehow. And you're having a lot of ups and downs. Don't worry, this too shall pass. Okay? And it'll pass quickly. Something's going to change. Okay? Now I want to get more detail about this. Yeah, something's going to change. Now look at this. Yes. Yes. This is the yes card. Remember this deck has a yes and no uh, card and the sun. When you have the sun and the moon together, that is ultimate balance. That is the balancing out of masculine and feminine energies. This is clarity. It says here, energy, light, life. You're going to have highs and lows, but your heart is going to transform. You're going to have clarity. So this is all going to make sense as to why this is happening. Okay. But let's get more detail. That's the overall energy that I'm feeling right now for this group. Whoever's guided to watch here, don't believe in the message. This may or may not resonate. I don't believe that. Don't believe it. What's this devil here for? Chariot. King of Pentacles. King of Wands, Six of Cups, oh man.
Now we have the Seven of Cups and the Four of Cups. Oh, gosh. The Chariot is journey, success, progress, it says, right? The King of Pentacles. I'm going to read what they say, but I'm going to tell and then I'm going to channel it how I do. King of Pentacles says reliable, visionary, generous. King of Wands, motivation, honor, standards, wisdom. Six of Cups says harmony, childhood, reconciliation. Now we have, though, the Seven of Cups and the Four of Cups. Seven of Cups, choice, instinct, passion, extremes, which is the high and highs and lows. And the Four of Cups is yearning, disillusion, and boredom. Okay, so now what I'm getting here, clear as day, right? Somebody is heartbroken here and feel like they have to um, have their boundaries up because somebody felt like they were going to have progress in a connection with somebody. You might have moved forward towards somebody and you had an, a, a vision that this person was going to be a reliable person. The king of pentacles is like someone's going to be your husband. You had an idea you were going to be with this person. This person was going to be passionate for you. You had the impression that you guys were going to reconcile, that you guys were going to achieve harmony, but there is a very big disappointment. Something happened here and you ended up completely disillusioned and bored with the idea. Okay. And now you're here with thoughts all over the place. The seven of cups is confusion. It could be delusion. Remember, those are the words I use for the seven of cups, even though it's not what it's what it says here. Confusion, delusion. You're starting to beat yourself up because you're saying, was I, in delu was I being delusional about this person? I thought this person was my everything. I thought this person could be the one. I thought that we were going to reconcile. I thought we were going to move in together. I thought that we were going to be together. And now I'm starting to feel like, like, it was all an illusion. Like it was all devil energy. Like maybe I was just obsessed with this person. Maybe it's not real. Because you feel grief over something in regards to somebody here and in, in regards to some kind of reconciliation. And you know what I find interesting here is you see, all of these cards for the most part have words on it except the one with the diamond ring in it which is an engagement ring that one doesn't even have any words on it which is like it was never you had and then you have that cup there in your thoughts the four of cups which says yearning disillusion and boredom it's like the cup here that doesn't have any words on it which is the one the engagement ring is the one that's on your mind it's like like you you've lost you, you lost hope that this is even possible. You thought, you thought that somebody was something and they weren't. They didn't show up with the motivation, the wisdom. They didn't live up to your standards, okay? They didn't show you passion. They didn't, they were, they didn't offer anything solid, which is that pentacles, okay? Definitely some kind of heartbreak here. And then we're going to get into the thoughts, see, because I see a lot of, I'm getting it, this is, it could be vice versa, but for the most part, I'm getting it's a lot of whoever's in the feminine energy, these are your thoughts. I'm going to go flip into the situation a little bit more and get more of their thoughts for you. Okay. What happens here? Eight of Wands. I don't read reversals. Good news travel, it says. What happened here is the Eight of Wands is the, is the card of quick communication, quick movement forward. Maybe somebody took a leap of faith very quickly or somebody told you very quickly, you know, all of these feelings. And then somewhere in their mind, their fear and their shadow took over. Right? Because what happened here? So the Eight of Wands is like you thought something was going to move forward very quickly to have a brand new beginning. Yeah. The Fool. Eight of Wands, good news travel. The Fool, which is a brand new beginning and taking a leap of faith, purity, potential, risk, and innocence and desire, it says. You know, what's interesting is that the desire, this card says desire. The only other card on this table right now in these cards that also says desire is the devil. You see, that's what I mean by there's, 
there's dark and light energy, there's dark and light energy in everything because they both say desire, but one's heavy and one's not. One's shadow, one's not. The full card is a beautiful card. It's taking a leap of faith. It's taking the risk. The devil card is devil energy. So I'm getting that you were open very quickly. You maybe you made plans to go see somebody. Or you got good news that this person like communicated with you. You thought it was going to move somewhere. And you, it says innocence, risk, desire. You were so open. You opened your heart to take a risk for this person. You opened your heart. You opened your heart to the potential of this person. You're very, you have a very pure soul. You were willing to take a risk. But then when you got there or when you started interacting with this person that you thought was going to move quickly, you realized that. You know, innocence and risk could also be naivety. You feel like now you were naive. That makes you feel bad. Like, you know, I was willing to take a leap of faith for all this person. So how is it that I'm willing to give up so much of my own life for this person and with all innocence and, and, and everything for this person and this person's not willing to do the same? That makes you feel bad because there's heartbreak here, Right? It's like, how is it that I'm, I'm willing to put so much of myself on the line for someone and they're not willing to do the same for me? Is basically what I get here. Now you're starting to doubt. That's what I'm getting with the intuition. You're starting to doubt your own intuition. You're like, okay, so you're going through a stage right now where you feel, you know, I felt this was my twin flame. I felt like this was my person. How could I even trust my own intuition if this is what it ended up bringing me? Maybe I am naive. How do I even know what's an obsession and what's my devil energy and what's my intuition and what's correct? If every time I try to follow my intuition, I end up in the seven of cups with an illusion. I end up disillusioned. Okay. I end up putting myself in bad situations. So now you feel like you broke your own heart too. Because you're starting to look back like maybe the signs were there. But the fact that the King of Wands and the King of Pentacles here, it's like somebody led you to believe that there was a possibility of more here that ended up not panning out. So you kind of feel duped a little bit, okay? The Divine wants you to know if this person, for whatever reason, is trying to make you feel like you are the reason, like you are the devil, because the devil here is a female. You don't have to be female, but it's feminine energy. I'm getting, don't listen to it. That's just an excuse. They're just finding an excuse for their own fear of commitment, okay? They don't want you to break your own heart and start making yourself feel like you did anything wrong, like it's all your fault. Let's say you had a reaction. Let's say you were sad. Let's say you started arguing and then they say that, oh, none of this panned out because of you and the way that you act. They want you, not saying don't take accountability for yourself, but... Don't take all the weight of the situation either because that's not fair. That's their own shadow and you don't deserve that. What happened with this King of Wands and King of Pentacles? Tell me, I need to know more about the story. Temperance. By the way, if you're watching, somebody donated a desk two months ago, but then I went away. I still have to build it. Someone's going to build it by next week. Good. Because even though this might look good on camera, it's very, this is a dresser. I'm very uncomfortable and I'm thankful someone donated it. But if somebody has to like actually build it, I'm really bad at building it. There we go. And the Ten of Swords. What happened? Okay. There was an ending. Somebody feels backstabbed. Yes. Why is the yes here, though? Hold on, that didn't feel right. Why is the yes? Damn. Temperance, Ten of Swords, the Mother Star, which is the yes, and the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands says challenge and courage. What happened with this person? These dogs barking, they're not mine. So this person led you to believe 
that you guys were going to be able to balance out some kind of connection, okay? Trying to temper yourselves to get together. But then here, the Ten of Swords is an ending. Here it says, endings final, closure. Now there's a child screaming, I'm sorry. Endings final, closure. Oh yeah, then I keep saying it over and over again. Endings final, closure, okay? So what ended up happening here is that somebody led you to believe that you guys were going to be able to balance something out but something happened somebody feels backstabbed somehow you feel like it's done okay the divine's telling you that this conflict was supposed to happen what i can't tell right now is if this conflict was supposed to happen so that you can grow okay so that you can heal so that you can listen to your inner guidance a little more maybe you weren't ready to be in a connection with this person and this person either yet so therefore they need to give you an ending okay in order for you to have the courage to Work on your challenges on your own. Sometimes the divine separates you before you're going to come back. Or if the divine is saying, this had to happen so that you can have the courage to move forward. Because, you know, this mother star looks like, it just looks like it's not the same. But it, the image just kind of gives me like chariot vibes. Like she's moving forward. And the ten of swords says final, <laughs> right? So I'm not sure. Okay. How does this other person feel about this situation? Hold on. That didn't feel right. That was a four of wands, though. What the hell? The knight of wands. It says fire, intuition, flow. The knight of wands is somebody that's like in and out. So they may be still trying to be in and out your life. And that's why I get the energy that you were putting boundaries. And the divine saying that's exactly what you need to be doing. You cannot continue to go on in this cycle. If someone's not making it official, if someone's not willing to make you feel like you are like the, the one that they want to be with, the divine saying, yes, you do need to have the courage to accept this challenge and separate yourself. If this person comes forward in the future, okay? Um actually wanting to make something right instead of blaming you or complaining being i want to still be your friend let's talk all the time that's bullshit don't do it you can't do it i know that i know it's you you can be friends but not in the same way that you were okay because that's going to give you nine of knight of wands energy that's going to keep you attached in a way that you don't deserve but tell me more about what this person feels this other person but then the King of Cups. Warm-hearted, intuitive, empathic. And then here it says intuition too. This person does love you, which is the crazy part. They just feel like there's something about their shadow that they can't heal enough. Okay, maybe you trigger them somehow. And instead of dealing with their triggers and finding common ground, they rather just say, oh, I'm not compatible with you. And you're going to realize, because I did channel that, they're going to have this issue with everybody that they deal with. But, you know, they're not willing to do that work. Then you need to be, stop putting yourself in a situation where someone makes you feel less than because it's just going to start to pick away at your self-esteem. What does this other person want with the feminine energy? See, could we get the king of cups first. And now we have the knight of cups. And that's kind of like a... A step backwards but you know the knight of cups in this deck is a female it's a feminine energy again it doesn't have to do with gender it's just the way that i'm seeing it you know what this person wants this person wants you to still give them your cup of love even if they there was some kind of an ending here which is why i get the nine of wands it's like and i don't really like that energy it's like somebody that if they they still love you right? They still care about you. So they still want you to offer your love to them. 
But if it's going to affect you, you can't give your, all yourself to this person. Does this person want some kind of a relationship? It's, it's crazy because then... Now we have the Queen of Pentacles, which is the counterpart to the King of Pentacles. They see you as a counterpart and they see you as their destiny. Wheel of Fortune is destined event. Karma, destiny, it says. The Queen of Pentacles, loyal, charming, wise. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen right now. There's going to be, there's some kind of separation here. This person is going to realize through your absence they don't value the loyalty that you have that you had for them. They don't. They do, but not really. They won't until it's gone. And unfortunately, some people that's the way that they that's that's just, you know, you don't want them to go through anything. And I'm not saying you're going to be with them. You might find somebody new. To be honest. But it looks like this person Led you to believe that there was going to be some kind of reconciliation. You were ready to give it all to this person. Move forward quickly. Take a leap of faith. And then you felt silly because they didn't give you the same in return. So now they're still coming forward with some kind of passion. Or they will. Okay? They want you to still give them your love. You know? Because you have a deep connection with this person. And... They might even connect with somebody else in the middle. <laughs> Let me, and they're going to start to realize that not everybody is willing to just risk it all for them like that. Like that that's an immense amount of love. That not everybody is as loyal as you. And that's just part of their karmic lesson. That's going to be their karmic lesson. Because the Wheel of Fortune is a karmic lesson. Their karmic lesson was that you are loving, that you are loyal. Okay, and the divine might bring somebody into their life that is not, even if it's fleeting, and you might not even know about it. Okay, and at that point, I'm not sure what's going to happen between you and this person, but that's what's going to happen. Yep, look, see, Eight of Cups. This is going to be, look, with the no card. Yep, Eight of Cups is walking away. Eight of Cups is walking away, abandoning something. And then it says the creator with, there's a, here it looks like kind of like a tower card. You see there's lightning and darkness there and it says no, okay? You're not going to give your heart to this person. You walk away from this person. This person's going to start flirting with someone. They're going to start to realize that there is, uh, like no one's going to want to deal with their shit. Because there's people here like, no, 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 no. They're going to get no's left and right where you would have, where you have given yeses. Okay. They're going to act the way that they did with you and no one's going to deal with it. That doesn't make you a fool. You kind of feel like a fool for giving yourself so much to this person. But this was part of the karmic lesson. Okay. This was supposed to happen this way. They're going to realize people are going to start walking away from them emotionally a lot the eight of cups is a card of walking away right and abandoned success but this card for some reason says change and shift so there's going to be a lot of walking away or people walking away from them and a lot of like rejections until this person actually starts to learn their karmic lesson that you were sitting there this whole time with stability with a pentacle that you were loyal that you were loving that you were wise that even if you guys had issues that you were willing to, you had the desire to battle that devil, that heartbreak with this person, understanding that connections are not perfect, that, it, that what's really important is love and everything else you work on it, okay? Not that you need to be allergic, not that you need to be marrying or being with someone that's completely toxic, okay, and abusive, but... You have to make a take a risk assessment of what's like most valuable. And if the love is real and important, then that is the foundation of it. And then everything else like conflict, you learn together how to manage that. You can go to therapy separately and together and 
the most important thing is that you guys have loyal hearts for each other and you make it work and if most if you have none of you are always miserable but if you have happiness because i'm getting this is the kind of person where like everything was great you're loyal you're willing to give it give them everything but because you like got conflict instead of being able had conflict instead of being able to look at themselves right or come in the middle they have this illusion in their mind that they're just gonna find the perfect person that's not gonna ruffle their feathers either so that they don't ever have to do the work to connect with somebody so what they're gonna do is say oh i still love you i still want you to give you my love they're gonna connect with other people and everyone's gonna continue to reject them because nobody because that's not a positive way of being. Because people understand that where there's conflict, you have to be willing to work on things. The difference is that maybe you had the most conflict with this person. They don't realize that it's because you stuck around. Okay? Because you, cause you fought for it. So at, the, at some point, it just becomes conflict because you were fighting for it. For other people, at the sight of conflict or sight of, the, of seeing these person, this person's toxic traits or inability to have a community, like connect, they're just going to be like, listen, this isn't working out. Boom. They're going to see it as everyone just, you know, they're going to perceive you as someone that's high conflict and other people just like not interested. But the real, the real, the reality is maybe you guys had a lot of conflict because you were actually loyal to them and you wanted to work with them because you wanted it because you wanted it. This person has an illusion that this person has an illusion that the perfect person is out there and it's it, it come that comes from it's an it, it, it's 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 a perfection fantasy it's fear of conflict okay and confusing like i said confusing their shadow with their intuition like their intuition says this isn't right no, what their intuition is actually telling them is you're not right. This person's not right either, but neither are you. You need to work on something that's triggering you so that you can connect with human beings in general. Not look for someone that's just like never going to ruffle your feathers. Because you're not meant to be alone for the rest of your life. Okay, so I'm getting that. The divine is telling you to have courage challenge yourself and stop giving this person your heart on a silver platter they have to learn a couple more lessons they have to have some people treat them bad a little bit walk away from them say no then they're going to start to really realize what you're worth at that point I'm not sure if you're going to want to want them back tell me if what i'm saying is accurate there's the empress what's this and the world and the two of cups. Yeah, this is going to happen. And then this person is going to. Want to come back and create something with you. Despite your differences all of a sudden. Okay, Empress. Abundance, grace, fertility, love. The world card is the closing out of an old cycle. It says reward, success, completion. Ten of cups. But could, could it be with someone else? What's going to happen? What should the feminine energy do about the situation? Let's go there. Page of cups. Look, even though you're the queen of cups, I don't read reversals, but it's like a, it's it's the way it came out like that. Because, you know, we were talking about the king of cups, how they want you to be the knight of cups. And here it's kind of like in reverse, even though you are their counterpart. Like in reverse like that means like dealt with the high priestess, which means silence. Like don't give them all of you. Keep it at a page level. Love, fun, magic, it says, right? Like you can be. You don't have to cut them off completely. Excuse me. You can say, hey, how are you doing? But don't give them what they're used to getting from you in this situation. That's their advice to you. Don't. Because they have a karmic lesson to learn. And so do you. Don't. Hanged man. Waiting, rebirth, sacrifice, reflection, it says. Okay? Like, wait. 
until someone has some kind of rebirth. Live your life in the meantime. So somebody could have some kind of healing. Okay? And if anything, this will be for you. And what's going to happen between them and this other person in the meantime? Ten of Cups. But it came out kind of like, I don't read reversals, but the way it came out, it's like, not in reverse, but like, not upright either. It was like kind of diagonal. You have a higher chance of coming together with this person. Ten of Cups is a union. Contentment, prosperity, joy, family. Is, is, is what's going to happen between this person and the person that we're talking about? Damn, that was the death in the Seven of Swords. What's going to happen between this person and the person that we're talking about? I want to know if that's somebody else. No, listen. No, oh, it's them. <laughs> there is a high... I know you think that there's no fucking way. Because this is not going to manifest right away, okay? I know you're thinking there's no fucking way. But dude... Now we got the two of cups. Then we got the ten of cups. Now we got the hierophant, which is commitment next to the lovers and the ten of cups. Love, harmony, union. The hierophant is spiritual awakening and also a commitment. Okay. Structure, knowledge, wisdom, teacher, it says. It says ritual, ceremony, tradition, structure, knowledge, wisdom, teacher. Like I said, this person is going to start to awaken. That's someone in masculine energy. And a union prop might form here, honestly, between you and this person. Remember that we can change our destiny. Either way, there is no doubt in my mind that this year you're going to find a connection. Okay? If it's not with this person, it will be with someone else. And it depends on whether or not you guys learn your karmic lessons. But this is what's going to happen. This person is going to meet a couple people that are going to treat them like shit. And they're going to start to realize what's important. Right, but you got to live your life in the process. Don't be giving them everything. Confirm that message. Hermit, don't be giving them everything. I just said that. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, look. Adventure, luck, action. There you are with your binoculars. Like, live your life. Healing, solitude, inner work. Work on yourself. Don't be giving them anything. Don't coddle them during this process. Okay, that dog, whoever it is, does not be quiet. And I love doggies. But I think somebody has a new dog. I live in a building, so... Um, that happened with my dogs when I moved here, too. Like, you know, their first couple weeks here, it's like a new environment. So they start, like, freaking out and smelling everything. They're like, what the hell is this? Now my dogs can care less because they, they, they smell the same scents everywhere, you know? There was a nasty guy. I'm sorry, I'm getting something that fell. That lives here. At this point, I'm just ranting there's always, this is a thing, right? Like when I first moved here, I live in a house. I rent it, obviously. I can't, we're not, I'm not financially abundant, unfortunately enough to buy, hopefully one day, right? So, but the rent here is very expensive. It's, it's like New York City. <laughs> well, maybe like New Jersey, but you get more bang for your buck, but still that's just what it costs. But when I moved here, it wasn't like that, but inflation's happening, like everything's more expensive, right? So we moved here, we were at a, in a home, and now what I'm paying for an apartment that's like literally one sixteenth of the size of the home where I moved and I had to move out of, um, I'm paying the same for what I paid for when I lived in a home here my first, um, my first year here, right? Remember I had to move, I had to get out. I don't know if you guys remember that, whatever. But living in a building, I don't have a choice because it's, it's expensive. It's cool and everything, but it's, it's always difficult. You never know who you're going to live by. Like, what group of personalities? I don't know. Why I'm going on a rant on this, maybe this is just an omen for someone. But there is a dude here that is, like, fucking... He's, like, an older man. Like, he is absolutely a narcissist. He's a fucking asshole. Literally just complaining about everything if my dog barks for one minute if i put music for one minute like at this point you've, you're like scared to fart in your own apartment like it's really ridiculous at first and this might be an omen for you i was like oh cautious about it telling my dogs to be quiet or whatever and they weren't even that like it, i get it if they're like really annoying 
then you gotta be respectful. But sometimes, but then you realize like, I was being, I was appeasing too much. That was kind of a karmic lesson for me. Like I was trying to people please too much. My dogs weren't doing anything wrong, really. And that dog that's barking out there is barking like a lot. My dog's not doing any of that, right? And you know what? I do have the right to put music sometimes. And it's not that I blast in music for hours every day. I don't, right? Because I live by myself. I wish I had someone to dance with and sing with, you know? So sometimes I'll just play a little music in the shower for literally like maximum like an hour every like five days. And he would complain about it. And then, you know, I was trying to appease him. But at one point I just snapped <laughs> and I told the guy to get out of my business because... It was just disrespectful at this point. Like, I'm, like, being stalked, you know. Like, I have a right. I'm, like, I'm working hard to pay for where I live. Like, this is a building. If you don't like the fact that you live next to people. And I live in the Caribbean. So, it's not like New York City apartments that are closed up. Like, every apartment has a balcony. It, they, houses without balconies don't exist. Or open terraces because it's warm out. Your house would get musty and gross. It's so humid. So everybody has their balcony open all the time. So like you can hear people put their TV on. You can hear people watching, you know, the the the, the soccer games. You can hear people having conversations. Like, and if you don't like that, you can't be living in an apartment building. So I stop appeasing. I stopped people pleasing. And I basically politely told him to go fuck himself. So that might be a message for someone. I just felt like sharing that with you. I don't know why. I just felt like sharing my story. The guy is such an asshole, dude. Like a like you don't even know the story. Like he's just an out, and I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't have conflict with people. Like it's not even in my personality. It's not. And you know, I felt a little bit validated because I had a conversation. I didn't bring it up much to the landlord, but the landlord actually brought it up to me and told me that she barely talks to that guy anymore because he is like disrespectful and rude and annoying. So I know it's not me. I don't know. I don't know why. Just I just had to get that off my chest. But listen, if that's you. That's an open. Stop people pleasing. You have a right to live your life happy where you live. Anyway, there is a high prop, prop there is a high probability that you and this person will come together. I, I you maybe you didn't want to hear that. But it's not gonna happen now. The wheel is literally like you are a mist, like you are in the middle of a karmic lesson right now. This is destined to come together. But you know we have free will. So depending on whether or not we learn our lessons, if this person doesn't learn their lesson, the divine's still going to grant you someone else to take their place. That's what they want. So they don't want you to worry about it. But you are in the middle of a lesson right now. The, the, the advice to you is stop giving to them. Okay? They need to get rejected hard a couple times from other people. Okay? They need to get rejected. Yeah death they need to die a couple times so they can transform to so transformation new beginnings endings change transformation begin again change transformation new beginnings it says i like this deck i like it i like it so far it's my first time using it on this channel you gotta let them have a couple endings okay let things transform and in the meantime date go out do your thing but i have a feeling like most likely you are you are to come together this will there there will be justice in this situation and when i see the justice and the hierophant together it's like a wedding okay remember you have free will here all right i hope this helps love and light